everyone, it's Crystal from Fabrications. I'm one of the long-standing teachers here. And today I'm gonna to show you how to properly wind a bobbin and uh, thread our BAF Passport machine. Um, most uh, top-loading bobbins uh, all thread very similarly. So if you have a different machine, um, this video is probably still helpful. It will definitely help you conquer the bobbin. So uh, I will just go ahead and put our spool of thread on here. Um, this machine really likes it when the thread is down. So I'm gonna turn it down, make sure I have my cap on so my thread spool doesn't go flying. Um, so for threading the bobbin on this machine, um, you can see we have little arrows and a little picture. Um, so it makes it very easy to remember what you're doing and where you're going. So this guy is gonna go start in the eye hole and then threads around the front and around. Now this big metal guy here um, is actually the tension for winding the bobbin. Um, it's very important that your bobbin has proper tension. Um, if you uh, have a bobbin where all the threads are loose when you kind of touch it, um, you'll wanna re-thread that. You want a bobbin that's very similarly stiff like your spool of thread. So I started with my eye hole. I went around my tension from the right around the back. And now I'm going to thread the bobbin. Um, now, um, I've seen this um, several ways lately, but the correct way is you want to put the thread from inside the bobbin up through the hole. So it's like this. So the thread's going from in and out. Now we'll bring this guy over to here and snap him down and snap him over. Now sliding it over will activate the motor of the bobbin winder. Okay, now you'll notice I'm taking lots of thread here and I'm really kind of wrapping it around my fingers because I don't want it to move at all. Holding your thread up and taut like this um, is what will help it actually snap naturally right at the top of the bobbin. So I'm gonna go ahead and start winding it. I'm gonna wind it at full speed as well. You don't really want the bob to wind the bobbin slowly. Speed will really help the bobbin thread run up and down more evenly. And um, if it doesn't run up and down evenly, you'll wanna take your finger and just uh, tap the thread and move it because we don't want a bobbin that is uh, concave or convex. We really want to try and get the bobbin to look as similarly to a spool of thread as possible. So here we go. So it didn't go all the way up there, so I just tried to get it even, and now it seems to be running better. And you'll notice this thread just snapped off all by itself. So you do need to be watching your bobbin the entire time you're winding it. Now when you thread your bobbin to its maximum, it will slowly start to stop. It kind of starts to skip. And that's because the bobbin is running into this uh, other bit on the side here. And that's kind of like telling us where the maximum amount of thread on the bobbin can be. Now, you'll see from this thread that snapped off, the overwinding just actually broke it off naturally. Now, this is actually my second take of this video. My first take, the thread came off perfectly with nothing sticking out. You'll notice this time, there's just a fleck of thread sticking out here. Now, this is the time you'd want to grab this thread and trim it right down into the hole. You can't leave any thread sticking up out of your bobbin. So you'll want that as clean as you can get it. I'll just slide that over, take that bobbin off, and there we go. We have a perfectly wound, tight bobbin. Um, this one's, I kind of like my first one better, but 
They're both great. They're both even. They're both tight. And that is what we're looking for. So I'm now going to unthread the top tension that I did for the bobbin because we don't use this guy when we're sewing. We just use him for the bobbin. So this machine has more diagrams helping us remind us how to thread the sewing machine. Um, so we start with the eye hole and then we have a back hook and then we're going to come down, up and around. Now, the one thing to note while doing this is this little tension plate on our machine often sits leaning to the left. Your thread needs to go to the left of that tension plate. Um, some machines are particular on which side it has to be, and some machines aren't. This machine in particular must be threaded to the left of this tension plate inside. Now, while we're talking about the tension plate, you'll notice that my presser foot is up. So it's not down and engaged. So if my presser foot is down and engaged, I actually can't get my thread in this groove properly because the tension is now shut and tight. So always, always, always thread your machine with the presser foot up. So you'll notice now I can wiggle this back and forth. And so I can make sure that my thread is to the left of that tension plate there. So I've gone down, up and I've done around. I'm going back down. Now way down here this machine has a metal plate here. It's actually a hook so if you go to the right of it it helps keep the keep the thread back and in line with this guy here. Then I'm also going to go to the left of the needle and you'll notice there's a little groove here to get the thread in back there. And there we go. The th thread is properly threaded. All I have to do is thread the needle. Okay, now that we've got the machine properly threaded, uh, we've done our down and up and around and back down. We've caught the thread to the right of this uh, metal plate and to the left of the needle here through this little tiny hook. It's right there. Now we're gonna go ahead and thread the needle. Okay, so this threader um, is pretty easy to use. You just pull it down, tip it towards the needle. Then you take your thread and you run it from left to right in front of the needle. And when I tip this, threader back to its original position. There we go. And I let it go back up. All it does is put a little loop through the needle. Let's see if we can get that in a better view here. And then I just pull that through. So now my needle, my needle is threaded. Okay, so now we're going to come back to our wonderful bobbin here. So this this window was not put on properly. Let me get that off. Okay. Now, every top loading machine, the bobbin goes the exact same way. So if you've been sewing at home and you're having trouble with your uh, tension, with your stitching not looking as nice as you think it should, double check your bobbin all the time. So this is Bob, he's my bobbin, and I'm gonna put him down with the string coming out to the left. So it kind of looks like the letter P, as someone told me recently. So Bob likes to be on the left, but once you put him down, he gets confused and he likes to wander off to the right. And I'm gonna hold him and say, no, 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 Bob, back to the left. Now, this machine has this uh, diagram that shows, shows us to go around this way, around this top notch, and then it's supposed to be, there's another arrow here that's hard to see. It's supposed to just come around and down and leave it like this. Now, that's great, but I like to teach everybody 
the old school way because it's important to really know what the sewing machine is doing so that you have a better understanding uh, of what's happening when you run into technical difficulties. Okay, so now that Bob is well pulled to the left, and notice how I'm holding the bobbin down. So I'm making some tension here, and that will actually help this thread get in the right spot. Hiding under this black piece of plastic here is actually the tension plate, similarly to the tension plate we used for winding the bobbin and it's just hidden under there so by holding the bobbin and pulling my thread to the left it really helps it slide into the right groove now i'm also going to bring my bobbin thread up through the hole where the needle goes and by do the best way to do this is to hold your top thread with your left hand either use your manual wheel on the right hand side of your machine by turning it towards you. Um, when you turn the wheel towards you, the machine sews forward. Um, or if you have an electronic machine, usually you have a um, needle down button. Now this machine makes electronic sounds the first time the needle goes down, that's okay. And then I'm, so I'm still holding the thread and I'm gonna push the needle up. And you'll notice this bobbin thread just went jumping. Now, if I pull this top thread a little bit and I look really closely under my presser foot, you'll notice that the threads here are intertwined and have come up. The other thing to note is now Bob is up running over the top of his case. Now that's very important. If you can't see the bobbin thread running up and over the top of the case uh, then a problem occurred and you need to re-thread it um, and I'm actually going to try and recreate that problem because it happens quite often and people don't really realize so hmm, let me so let's see here so let's say I did that let's see if this will work for me Oh, no, I got him that time too. Oh, no, I didn't. See, I pulled him out rather quickly and it jumped out of the spot it was supposed to be in. And you'll now notice the bobbin thread is not in the correct spot. So I can't see it running across. So I know there's a problem. So I'll take it out, trim this thread as it gets longer and longer. Okay. So, Bob looks like a P. I put him down on the left. He gets confused, goes to the right. I hold him down. I bring him to the left. And then I hold my top thread. I go needle down, needle up. And I pull this top thread a little bit. And I check under my presser foot. A pair of snips or your seam ripper. And you can just pull them out my threads. Yep, Bob is running across the top of his bobbin. Then I'll put my little window back in. Now it's, uh, be sure to put these windows in properly. They often have uh, one little tab that sticks out on the left hand side. That's generally meant to go under this metal here. So uh, because it acts like a spring. So I push that down and it clicks. But because it's under, when I pull back the little slide here to open the bobbin window, it will bounce right up. So if you don't put it down properly, um, which happens often, people just sit it there, then it's really hard to get up and off again. There we go. So tuck that under, push that down, trim your threads. And in general, most machines uh, really like the threads to be to the back. And I put them over on the right hand side because when I put my presser foot down, I can generally put a finger on them back here when I start to sew. And then I don't have any problems with my threads being pulled back into my sewing machine when I start my stitch.
Okay, now that we've properly threaded our machine, we're gonna go on to talk about uh, the needle and the different stitches the machine does. So this machine actually has uh, a little slide card here. It shows us all the different stitches the machine does. Um, the first section is mostly all garment sewing stitches. Um, and then we have uh, more decorative and embroidery type uh, stitches um, in the other two sections. So um, I'm gonna show you a couple stitches, um, but we'll start with just very basic. We're gonna go from zero one, which you'll note here is just this straight stitch. Now it's a thin straight stitch compared to two, which is also looks like a straight stitch, but it's, it's bold. And it's bold because it's actually a triple straight stitch. Just like number five is a triple zigzag stitch. And all that means is that it will stitch the same stitch three times before moving on. So just for the sake of learning about this, we're just gonna use number three, a regular zigzag. So it says zero three, so I'll type in zero three and it will do its thing. Now the needle was already lined up for zero three, but sometimes if the needle is not lined up for what you need, it'll just, if you look closely, it just moves all by itself. It goes to where it should natively be for how the stitch is set in the machine. Okay, I can also adjust the stitch. I can adjust how wide it stitches and I can also adjust how long it stitches. So for now, I'll do the regular presets of this zigzag. Just got some little scrap fabric here. I'm gonna use my edge of my foot as my seam allowance guide right now. And we'll do some regular zigzags down the edge of this fabric here. Okay, now if I want to change the width of the zigzag, uh, as soon as I press this button, it will show me the native, the native size. So if I want to make it smaller, I can make it smaller. And this light will stay lit up whenever I have adjusted my dimensions of my stitch away from the preset standard. So I've made this, I'll make it really small so we can see the difference. And then also I will, just so we can really see how everything looks differently, I've put that back. You'll notice this light has now turned off. So it's back to its preset standard. And then I will also adjust now the length of the stitch. So I will make it as long as it will allow me to. And you'll notice again, the light is lit up. So I've changed something. Okay, and I'll put this back to its preset. There we go. So if I lift my presser foot and pull this out, you'll notice we have the regular setting. We have the setting of the width. So how wide it stitches. Remember, I turned it down really, really low. It almost looks like a straight line now. And then I put it back to the regular width, but made it really, really long. So now we can see the difference that changing your stitch width and stitch length can make. Okay, while we're talking about threading our machine, threading our bobbin, we should, and playing with all our different stitches, we should also take note that different fabrics require different needles and occasionally needles break. It just happens when you're sewing, especially if you're sewing uh, many layers or really thick fabric, maybe you accidentally run over your zipper pull. Breaking needles happens all the time. So 
It's not very difficult to change your needle. You wanna hold your needle with your left hand so that your needle doesn't drop into the machine. And then there is a screw to the right of the needle. Uh, you just wanna turn that towards you now. Oh, there it goes. You, it usually is only finger tight, so you shouldn't need your screwdriver for your needle. And then you can just unscrew that till the needle comes loose and pull the needle out. Um, you can unscrew it quite a bit, so don't go too far. Just make sure it's loose enough for your needle to come out. You don't wanna pull your screw out all the way. Now you'll note a needle, let me, a needle has a rounded front and a flat back. I think you can see that well there. And so when you're putting a new needle in your machine, you just want the flat back to go towards the machine. And then you just slide him back up where he came out. Now, if you're pushing the needle up into the slot, it will stop naturally at a point. That's where you want it to be. So make sure your needle's all the way up and hold it up while you retighten that screw on the right. And there you go. Then you can rethread your thread. So to the to the left of this hook, across the front of the needle, there's another hook right beside there. And when I tip it back, it pulls a little loop through my needle and then I can pull my thread through. There we go. And always tuck your thread under your presser foot. And again, I'm always putting my threads to the back and to the right.